Every year, it's basically a guarantee that fans, analysts, reporters, everyone's trying to predict who will be the next breakout stars. But what isn't guaranteed is the players who actually will have breakout seasons. Sometimes, it just never happens. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Miles Turner and Lonzo Ball. Two players who play completely different positions, two players who have completely different stories and upbringings and expectations. Yet, what they do share is their ability to make everybody anxious. They're both very young, but for the past few years, it almost seems like they're always on the list of players who we expect to have breakout seasons. But as of now, we're still waiting for that to happen. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today, let's take a look at the current situations of Miles and Lonzo. What have they been doing for the past few years? What's causing them to stagnate and not break out yet? Are there any issues with their game or team situation that's preventing them from doing so? But before we start... This video is sponsored by Raids Shadow Legends, one of the most ambitious RPG projects that's ever been released. It's an extremely immersive experience that's totally free to play, and has over 10 million downloads worldwide. You can customize your characters however you want and choose the artifacts to design a unique mastery build for each one. There's a competitive game mode too. As you progress, there's a lot of strategy involved, especially when you participate in PvP, which is my favorite aspect of the game. You can build and improve your collection of champions by doing the solo missions as well with a fully voiced story campaign. If you want to start playing now, go to the description, click on the link, and you will get 100,000 silver and a free champion, the Hexweaver, to help you kickstart your journey. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. These rewards will be available only for the next 30 days and only for new players. First, let's take a look at Miles Turner. Drafted in 2015 with the 11th overall pick by the Indiana Pacers, he joined a team that was a bit past their heyday. The Pacers were contenders for a while from 2012 to 2014-ish, but after Paul George's gruesome injury and the core of the team breaking up, Turner, at just 19 years old, was the first prospect they would draft who was deemed as a future cornerstone of the franchise. Oh, and by the way, I checked his draft comparison on NBADraft.net and they projected him to be Rafe LaFrance. Like, what on earth is that? Rafe LaFrance? I've literally never seen any player being compared to Rafe LaFrance before. I mean, I, I know who he is, but it's my first time seeing him mentioned in any draft comparison. Anyway, moving on. Right away, he hit the ground running, eventually working his way into the starting center spot. In his first ever playoff run, he averaged over 3 blocks per game and had some very good games. Then, by his sophomore season, he was rewarded with a larger role, now averaging over 14 points a game, the third highest among the team. In January of 2017, Larry Bird himself, the president of the Pacers, had a lot of great things to say about Turner. He was so impressed with him at how he was so smart, mature, and talented at such a young age. He stated, quote, He works hard, he wants to be great, he's going to be great. To me, I think he's got a chance to be one of the best players or maybe the best player in the franchise's history. You've still Paul George with a bunch of time left too, and you had Reggie Miller here with all the other great ones. But being a 20-year-old and doing what this kid is doing just blows my mind. And that was a lot of praise coming from Bird, who normally doesn't talk that much about other players. The fact that he believed Turner could be an all-time great shows how promising he really was back then. However, over the last few years, he has not gotten much better since then. Instead of him having a breakout season, we saw his comrade, DeMontis Sabonis, have his own breakout season. Sabonis has improved so much since he came to Indiana to the point where it forced the Pacers to play two centers in their starting lineup. That's how amazing Sabonis has been, averaging 18 points a game, leading his team in scoring, and 13 rebounds a game, leading his team in rebounding. Turner, on the other hand, is averaging the lowest usage rate of his young career. And in terms of scoring, he's only the fourth or fifth option now. 
Over the past few years, he's always been a valuable contributor for the team, but individually, he has yet to make that jump. On top of that, he's seen his role change quite drastically. Defensively, he's still been very good, anchoring the paint, being very quick on his feet and contesting pretty much every shot. Offensively though, while he's gotten a lot better at shooting, now nearly half of his total field goal attempts come from three-point land. He's currently averaging a career high in three-pointers per game. This is not exactly how we expected his career to go. This change has to do with Sabonis getting a much bigger role. And being the better post-up player, he's the one who spends more time near the basket. So Turner's role is to complement him by spacing the floor. It's a great dynamic and it's been working as the Pacers as a team have done better than expected. Unfortunately, individually, by now Turner was expected to be more of a Chris Bosh type of player. Like a versatile defender putting up 20 and 10 or something like that. But with the way the Pacers operate, it's a total team effort. And Turner is just better suited to be a complementary piece as opposed to the main option. Additionally, he's had some injury issues too, which hampered his progress. Personally, I don't think Miles has gotten any worse as a player, it's just that his role has changed a lot and in his current situation, there are simply better options on offense than him. It would have to take a change of scenery to see him truly break out. Or maybe he's just not that type of player. Maybe he's destined to be a supporting piece. Next up, let's take a look at Lonzo Ball. Everyone knows Lonzo Ball. Even before he got drafted, he was in the center of a lot of discussions. Is he the next Jason Kidd? The next Rajon Rondo? The next Magic Johnson? Well, his father thinks so. But now, in his third season, he recently put together a string of very good games actually. From December 29th to January 10th, he averaged over 20 points a game, over 8 assists, over 50% from the field, and 41% from 3. Defensively, he still looks fine. Offensively, his passing skills are still there and he's running the offense relatively smoothly. Even though he has been more aggressive, his scoring has been pretty rough. His percentages are still god-awful. His field goal percentage is still sub-40%, his true shooting percentage is still sub-50%. Both of which are well below average. Thankfully, his free throw shooting for this season is at an all-time high, at 51%, breaking his previous best, 45%. In fact, he doesn't really get to the free throw line that much at all as he typically tries to avoid contact. Before he arrived in New Orleans, his first two seasons as a Laker were quite turbulent and polarizing. With some heavy expectations on his shoulder, everyone was looking at him under a microscope just like with every other player on the Lakers. As the second overall pick, right ahead of Jason Tatum, Lonzo was not very pleasant to watch. Aside from the horrendous shooting, he also suffered a bunch of unfortunate injuries. A shoulder injury sidelined him for over a month and he ended up missing 30 games as a rookie. While his first year was starting off slow, his teammate Kyle Kuzma, a late first round pick, was receiving most of the attention. While Kuzma surprised everyone with his scoring ability, Lonzo was struggling. The following season wasn't much better as he got knee surgery before the season started. On top of that, with the addition of LeBron James and Rajon Rondo and even Lance Stevenson, it was expected that Lonzo would get significantly fewer chances to run the offense. Obviously, the Lakers got better as they got better players, but once again, the injuries and inconsistent play continue to hamper Lonzo's progress. Combined with a broken jump shot that looked absolutely ridiculous, there was a lot of work he needed to do. And perhaps, a change of scenery is what he needed. So in the summer of 2019, he was packaged in the Anthony Davis trade, sending him to New Orleans. The primary focus over the offseason was to fix his jump shot and recently it's been looking a lot better. In an article from December, Andrew Lopez of ESPN stated, Prior to this season, Ball's shooting form involved him bringing his right hand, his shooting hand, across his body and releasing the ball to the left of his head. This year, with the help of Pelicans assistant coach Fred Vinson, the third year guard has modified his shooting form in hopes of turning around what has been a dreadful start from the field to his NBA career. 
When asked about his jump shot and what changes he was going to make, Lonto himself said, quote, We just take it step by step. It wasn't a drastic change from the beginning. I kind of got here and he just started with my follow through. We started with legs after that, then we started from the left to the middle to get it to the right. Now on the Pelicans, he's had cold stretches and hot stretches. Sometimes he'd show he's capable of taking the next step into stardom, but other times he looks invisible, a non-factor. Now this time, it's his teammate Brandon Ingram capturing the spotlight as he made a massive leap into a star. For Lonzo, it's still up in the air when or if he could turn it up a notch. His current situation is actually pretty good. I don't think he'll consistently put up ridiculous counting stats, but it is worrisome that even with all the talent around him, he's still not driving to the rim that much, and instead settles for a lot of errant jump shots. For a 6'7 point guard, he should be attacking the rim way more often. That's why, as I mentioned, he doesn't draw many fouls, averaging just one free throw per game. In fact, he has the lowest free throw rate out of every other guard in the league. A lot of people have compared him to Jason Kidd, and by a lot, I mean everyone. Even Lonzo's slow start to his career is comparable to Kidd's slow start when he first entered. However, it's very rare to see another player replicate Kidd's career path. It's not guaranteed that Lonzo will go down that same path. But I'm still rooting for him and hopefully he will have that breakout season we're all waiting for. Anyway, that's all folks. That sums up what's been going on with Lonzo Ball and Miles Turner. Two young players that we expected to break out by now, but they still haven't. Let me know your thoughts on these two players in the comment section. Do you see them having a breakout season soon? Do you see them ever becoming all-stars? Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.